Yo, what's going on guys? Long time waiting for a new video, but I've been waiting to get all of my parts together for this video. Um, sometimes videos do take longer than average, um, depending on what it is. Um, but yeah, today's video is on the BK1S. Um, I waited to get mine because I wasn't sure on the blaster. I actually saw this before everyone else pretty much. I just didn't actually know if it was an, an upgraded model or if it was just the original model still that had all the issues. Now that people have tested it and bought it, it's, you know, we've discovered it's not the same one. Um, and um, yeah, so I've been testing it and doing my own thing on it and sort of come to my own conclusion on it really. Um, I got it from Black Raisins and I, and it's just crazy. Like, um, it took like four days for it to come from Singapore to England. They also are the cheapest place to get dra black dragon darts. Um, I bought a whole case worth of them. Um, and these are the Gen 2 with the uh, glow tip, as you can see on there. Um, so I've got quite a lot of those. And uh, those are my preferred dart for things like this um, because it has a manual bolt well not a manual bolt an automatic bolt um that has less friction um between chambering from the magazine into the barrel uh you get less j uh, jams and stuff um yeah i had i've had, i've got quite a good opinion on this a uh, different opinion on this because everyone everyone's videos are all the same to be honest like i'm not i'm not bashing anyone but it's like you can watch anyone's video and you'll get the same um opinion I've got quite a different opinion on this blaster. This isn't perfect, this blaster. Um, we'll start with the box and everything, and we'll get into all that. But as you can see, it has a really cool box. I really like this. Um, it's just like an airsoft box. Um, and these guys do come from Gelsoft, so they are. They probably did start in airsoft and then moved to Gelsoft and then moved to a blaster. Um, so a lot of people, depending on where you get your one from, you won't get it in the box like this. So you get this sleeve on the outside, um, and it says they're powered by the T two three eight uh, board. And I did some research on that as well. Um, there's also some warning instructions on the back, which I always show even in my airsoft things. So I'll show you that. Um, very interesting board and it's all plug and play it's very it's a very interesting board and i do recommend you guys doing some research into that so here's here's the box here with it in and you have the little foam you take off like that and it's on the inside so definitely a, a worthwhile box compared to pretty much everything else on the market um in here you'll get your magazines you'll get your two rails, which I only put one on so far because I prefer it that way and I'll show you why. Um, and you get some accessories in here and in here. Um, and if you get it from Black Raisins, you actually get four magazines with it. Um, you will have to buy a battery separately. Um, so, obviously, uh, battery power blasters and stuff aren't my forte. Um, even in airsoft, I'd never really truly understand, understood it. Um, so I was told that the Diana battery, because that's the same connector, you could use that battery with it. It's a 4S, and 4Ss don't work in the BK1S. Um, however, these are a good loadout, like primary and secondary. You take your kit off it and you just use it with a red, you know, an RMR. Um, you could, you know, the, the, the kit that I had for this, I still have obviously the Rexfire Ultimate, is is a primary slash secondary. You can use it as a secondary if you want um, with the with the side folder folded, um, but I just sometimes I prefer to use it as a pistol. It, it really does depend on what mood I'm in, um, and if I'm if I've already got something that fills that niche almost the same way, I'll keep this as a pistol um, because this is basically an AR pistol designed. Um, blaster um, so you know a lot of the mods that people have designed already for the BK um, kind of turns it into more of a honey badger um, or or something like an AR that fires out of a 5.56 or a 300 blackout round um, 
And obviously a fire, uh, 300 blackout would be much better in a barrel like this rather than 556. You can do your own research on that. Um, but that is um, the case. And a lot of people just prefer to go straight to nine millimeter over 300 blackout because you get actually quite similar performances as well. Um, so I'll put the box there. But um, yeah, this, this definitely is more like an AR pistol. Uh, with a straight magazine um, but you can you know turn this into more of a honey badger build the bk2 has a honey badger style stock so if you do the hand guard you uh, and replace the barrel you will get a honey badger styled blaster so the charging handle on this is on the right hand side um, and there have been some talks in the community about changing this to a t-bolt style which would be cool um, I've got my sling on here at the moment, so I'll put my accessories on that I do use with this real quick. So these are, I just took these off just so I could put this back in the box to show you how it came. So it really is this simple to put your accessories on. Um, But have it all like that, and um, yeah, this system is just awesome. Um, so you will get you will get this bear to start with. On this side, I have my rail. I don't really need a front grip style um, accessory or a front front thumb stock thumb stop um, because. With my accessories I do use with it, such as my PLR3 Valkyrie, which just clips on, tightens on. This really does complete that. Um, I kind of, I wrap my thumb over it, and that is a hand stop to me, so my hand doesn't go any further than that. So I wrap my fingers and do a thumb over grip, because I'm using an, an EOTech, it has a bit of a rise to it. So my thumb doesn't block the EOTech. It just sits under the reticle. Um, also with a sling, because of the way it's positioned, you can actually use that as a grip as well, um, which I have seen some people do on old school setups like that, where you just grab the bottom of it. Um, I do have a lot of accessories coming for this, uh, which I have some of them already. I just need to do the video separately now. Um, but some of the things I did order was I ordered uh, some some nylon stops. These come from Black Raisins, and they extend the mag uh, a little bit. You just take the base plate off and just let the spring run right through to the bottom of this, uh, tighten it on. Um, and it's really nice. I don't think these are printed. They seem to be injection molded. Um, but they, they just complete that. And they also, because they add a bit of weight, you can drop these mags. Um, I do have something coming that will help me assist me in dropping these mags out um, because obviously it is an AR magazine release. I do have to reach up with my thumb because I'm left-handed. Um, but if you're right-handed, you can drop these mags out freely. I added a little bit of tack to the dust cover and that's just so when it's open, it stays open because otherwise it will like unfold on itself. Um, and yeah, so the other thing I did change is I changed out the buffered stock to a metal one. This is an X Power Airsoft stock. It came with the 76 blaster. Um, it's an aluminum, al aluminium buffer tube. Um, I drilled a hole in it just if I do have any batteries that don't fit in here, I can run that, run the battery up on a rail and just bring the, the, um, optic either for forward or back depending on where i put the battery box um so the problems i had with mine mine uh was jamming quite a bit not not fit not failing to feed the dart the, the bolt would actually stay locked back um on semi or i would pull the trigger the bolt would come back and just stay there and then it would beep uh, and i'd have to you know, unjam it, the un, you know, the, the unpriming process to um, let the bolt go forward. And um, 
that happened like on two three mags until you know i kept just tr tr shooting it putting more and more mags for it and over over the, the course of those mags it just stopped doing that um i did lubricate it as well because it was bone dry i do recommend doing that um and you can pull the bolt back at least halfway to check the chamber so you can press check this system which is quite good because you can run a light through the barrel um i found that the work of gen 3s don't fire the best through this and it really is probably the barrel fit there isn't you know there really isn't much barrel fit with this you can see they just slide out um the darts that came with it are much better and um Black Dragons, they, they obviously don't have very good fit either, but they seem to fire the best, um, to be honest. Uh, I had a few uh, failures to fire with the Worker Gen 3s. Uh, they would you'd fire and they would just get stuck in the barrel. Uh, you can obviously fire again and get them to fire out in twos. But yeah, this, from what I've found, is quite ammo dependent. I mean, I'm, you know what ammo you use. So I'm using the BK1S battery. This is a 2S LiPo, I think. Might be a 3S. So we just put that in there, push that into the buffer tube. This is a little bit longer than the, uh, the stock one too, so it's much easier to just put the battery in. I found that this stock is actually really good quality compared to the um, first batches, um, like Wellcom's one, his one would split open, uh, mine doesn't do that. Um, and yeah, it works quite well with my replacement stock and castle nut. Um, putting the sling on, I can now use it the way I explained, and as you can see, I can operate the light and it pretty much stays where my support hand is. There is no, you know, movement from that. So, and you can bring the light further back. Uh, I've actually got it a bit further forward right now, but you can see it doesn't come off the edge of the handguard. Last but not least, I did buy this as well, which is made of nylon. Um, same material as the mag stops. Now I've had a little bit of issues with this. The the little nut that works on this doesn't really like to go on tight, so take the sling off for now. It should be easier. But put this on, and I actually tighten it this way because it works a bit better. I can get a better grip on that. But that I can still slide this off if I pull hard enough. So it's not, and it does rotate as well. So it's not on there completely tight, and that's due to the handguard. It snugs up against it. Um, make sure my mic's still on. Yeah, but it does complete the look. And obviously, it's not orange, but I'm not really going for an orange blaster. I'm going for a, a black and yellow one for right now. Um, if I do uh, like this blaster and I trust it, I will do a custom paint job. Some of my close friends know what I'm going to do. Um, also, there's no beeping right now, so sometimes I don't get a beep when I put the battery in. But let's see if it will fire. There we go. So now, now it it cocked itself. So this will be free to free to work. Um, it seemed like it was set on two shot. So now, now the beep works. So yeah, there we go. Um, so we've got auto, single, and safe. So. And obviously, if you hold down the trigger, you'll get a two-shot burst. But if you hold it down for a little bit, you can um, program it to just fire single. Um, so with it pre-cocked, you can just pre-cock it. And then you can load up your mag and just chamber around, which is really cool. Um, and obviously, the ejection port is on the left side, or the inspection port. Um, so yeah, um, I really like my EOTech on this and my backup sites.
um, it's not super, you know, tactical. It's got what I need on it, basically. It doesn't have anything that isn't necessary. Because there's no point filling up your handguard with, with stuff if you don't plan on using it. Um, and not everyone actually needs a front guard. There is different ways to grip this without having to use a front guard. Um, I may do because it's, you know, it's very simple to put them on, but I'll just experiment and see how I feel with it, I think. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll just show you shooting it. So, got everything turned on. Also got my Diana in, in a holster. You can see they're a very good pair. The categories. So you can see this works perfectly fine now. Um, let's do a trick shot. No one else seems to do this. You can see the bolt reciprocates. Two rounds left. Out of ammo. <laughs> but there we go. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if every single one takes a bit of breaking in, but my bolt, I tell you. Yeah, see, it's, it's making that ratchet noise a little bit. Um, I know that's the teeth on the bolt. Um, it's not causing an issue right now, but yeah. Let's do a dry fire. There we go. See, sometimes... Yeah, see, sometimes the bolt just does that, and I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments, but, you know, I haven't seen that with anyone else's. Um, yeah, so... Uh, it is cool though. It, it it feels like an actual sort of firearm. To be fair, um, definitely. Um, so yeah, you see, I I do run my tactics very old school. I take the I put the safety on when I'm reloading, take the safety off again. Um, but yeah, the sling the sling is a really good idea as well. This is an old school sling. I've turned into, uh, it's a single point sling actually, I can turn into a two point sling. Um, but yeah, um, does work quite well to be fair. Um, the blaster itself is quite light without the accessories on. Um, it feels quite weighted once you put things on it. Um, it's very good. It's a very good training tool in my opinion. Um, uh, and I'll show you how to deprime it without firing, without dry firing it, even though, you know, you tend to dry fire stuff like this quite a bit. So load two rounds. Put it on single. Chamber that round. Safe direction. Now, because this is on double shot, what you have to do, hold your trigger, get another dart, We've heard the double beep, so now, chamber that round, and now it's deprimed. So you've got to chamber that round real quick, and then deprime, um, and that will fire that without doing any, you know, dry firing. Um, will it damage the blaster? I don't think it will. Uh, AEGs in themselves, they, people dry fire them all the time. Um, my MP5, you know, everyone's in my SRC MP5. Uh, very, very expensive. Um, dry fire that a lot. Uh, 
people tend to dry fire that a lot when it comes to AEGs. Um, I had an AEP, which is a pistol um, based on a Smith & Wesson made by Tokyo Marui. Um, you can dry fire that all day long. And that has blowback to um, very similar to how this you know, reciprocates. And you'll know this is you know, deprimed by first, you won't see the white there, and also it will be quite stiff. Um, if you do happen to use a 4S LiPo, such as a Diana battery, what you'll find is it will beep four or five times. Um, you may get it to fire once, but that'll be it. Uh, that's literally all that happened to me. And um, yeah, the bolt was uh, attached to the, the gears. It was like locked on them until I put the, you know, the correct battery in and it unlocks itself. So yeah, you won't damage anything doing that. Um, as long as you don't keep trying and trying and trying to use it, which, you know, which I didn't, so that's okay. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good blaster for a hundred, a hundred pound. Um, in airsoft, you'd be paying easily up to upwards of 250, 300 or something like this. Um, especially an AEG that lets you chamber the first round. You don't see stuff like that on AEGs usually. You put your magazine in and you just fire away. Um, and it doesn't seem to usually be any sort of blowback either. This has quite a bit of like blowback just because it has to, the, the gears have to move back such a big bolt compared to uh, a, a BB gun or an airsoft gun, which only moves it a very few centimeters. Um, the only downside I've found is the grip is obviously a bit wider than an all AR grip, but that's because it houses the back of the motor. Um, so I don't believe you'll be able to replace it. However, it's got good te texturing on there um, and good stippling on the front. So it, it does feel good. It doesn't feel crap. I don't think I'd need to replace it anyway. Um, but the great thing with this is it really is modular. You can change everything on this. You can go into the guts of it. You can change all the internals if you know what you're doing. Um, you can rewire stuff. You can do everything. And this is Talon compatible if you sand down just, the, I think it's the back piece and the front piece slightly from what I've read. Um, so if you do want to use them, that is a thing. But most places sell the, the mags so cheap and they usually come with a load of the mags too. So you don't really need to. Um, the proprietary doesn't really matter when you've got like four or five of these mags. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's a great primary. Uh, I do recommend getting into it, learning how to use it before you take it out into the battlefield because it is a bit confusing compared to um, like a normal, normal Nerf blaster just because it's electronic. You've got to understand what the beeps mean. Um, you know, the general usability of this from single to auto is, is perfectly fine um and i don't i haven't heard about any parasitic drain either of the battery so from what i've read some people leave the battery in deprime it and leave it like that um i don't really i'm not that's not my type of thing i don't really like leaving batteries on um so i do i do i do uh take mine out when i stop using mine uh other things i can say about it um this literally does give you all the pros of an age uh, of a spring powered airsoft gun, but with all the, all the negatives taken away, you don't have to prime it. Um, the only thing I found, I've found that's a problem with this is that people try to put upgrade springs in and it's not worked very well. Um, you can kind of make the barrel longer, even on this one, because this is quite a short barrel still, even, even by this standard, it's quite small. I think the barrel could easily be a bit longer, including the handguard. Um, and that would improve accuracy and power and everything like that as well. So it's meant to be, uh, you know, a CQB style. Even this one is meant to be sort of CQB. Um, I think I feel like these, the BK, uh, BK1S or the BK2S, uh, yeah, the BK2S is more of a close CQB, like extreme CQB. Um, but I, I uh, didn't want the FPS drop, so I got the full size model. Um, the other stock is cool. Uh, but I do have options for this. I literally every stock I own, even the Nexus Pro X stock fits on this. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, other than the breaking period I had at the beginning, uh, 
I don't have any bad things to say about it. I mean, you watched me put two mags out of it then. I didn't have any issues with that. So it works. Um, yeah, and if you have a printer or you know someone that prints or little sneak preview, if, if you want to come to me, I do have some some you know news coming up in the future. I don't want to say too much yet. Um, and we could print you some stuff like this, uh, some handguards on the front here. Uh, this, this handguard is totally replaceable with whatever you want. But this handguard is cool as it is. I do like it. Um, I do like handguards with not much on. That is my thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, definitely recommend this blaster. Um, it's not expensive. Um, and I was expecting uh, websites to price gouge this once the popularity got up, but it, it hasn't. So get on it while you can. I don't want this to price the people to price gouge this blaster because it's good. Um, you know, you, you can, the thing with a, another blaster, like a Springer or something else, it's cheaper to start with, but the upgrades you're paying will get it to the price of this anyway, or more. Um, so with that, you can spend the hundred straight off the bat, get something like this and then save up and get the accessories, um, and kick the blaster out how you want it. It does have a real steel look to it. Of course, it looks like an AR pistol in nine millimeter. Um, but that doesn't bother me, and I think people need to understand where blasters originally came from. You know, um, you know, the idea of a blaster wouldn't have come around if guns weren't a thing. So, you know, they did come from somewhere. And of course, if you want to turn the handguard orange and stuff like everyone else has been doing, that's fine. Um, but I think we need to become more accepting of things like this in the community because. The whole lot, the whole community isn't going to change to this. It's only just going to be an option. There's nothing wrong with having more options in the community. I mean, I do like the space looking blasters as well. People moan that this looked too realistic. It looks more like an alien Luago. But together, these look cool. Um, they do have colors on them. They do look like toys. I mean, this is why I don't, this is why I don't like people turning in the real ARs this color. So I've seen that. I have seen real ARs in this color scheme. So that is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of like pink real guns or like stuff like that, because, you know, in a lot of countries, including mine, that's how we distinguish the toy one from the real one. So once we start playing with fire like that, that is when I, I don't like it. So it's in the real gun world. I don't like the colors. So that's, I think that's where we need to sort of hold our ground because this, this is not an issue guys. Maybe the orange part here, the orange tip in America, but in the UK, 50% bright color means it's a toy. That's over 50%, um, even with the stock piece there too. So it's not an issue, um, even the barrel's orange. So that's been my sort of like ramble at the end of the video. You know, I always have a little ramble speech at the end. Um, but we just need to become more accepting to, to tactical stuff. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, and it works. This blaster works. That You get the thumb of approval from me. Um, I do ha I, like I said, I do have some issues with the bolt now and then, um, but it's not cause of ma major ma malfunction. When I pull the trigger, I usually get it to fire from now on. So stay tuned. I have a lot of accessories coming for this blaster um, from my team as well. Um, so yeah, big shout out to the T Pain. He's one of my main team members. Um, we've got a lot of stuff coming. Um, not just for this blaster, but we've got a lot of stuff coming this year. Um, it's been a bit of a slow year this year just because of some setbacks. Um, but you know, there's always going to be bumps in the road. Um, but we've come quite far this year. So I'm very, very proud of our team. Um, and yeah, there's not much else I can say about that. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, I rate this blaster a four out of five. Of course, nothing is perfect. There'll always be little things here and there with things in life. Um, but yeah, solid, solid performer and, um, I can't recommend it more uh, enough really. So, um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.